These are the most common cybersecurity career myths. So for anyone who is looking to start a career in cybersecurity, you've probably heard it many different things, whether it's from the news, from the media, from friends, or even mentors maybe. And I'm really excited to be talking about those with you guys today. I think one of the first ones to know is the myth that you can't get into cybersecurity as a beginner. So I definitely think this is very much false. I do know that it is a popular path for those who are interested in going to cybersecurity who may first start out in a IT help desk or a sysadmin role before they eventually go into their first cybersecurity role but I definitely don't think that is something that is required. Personally when I was looking for jobs out of college I had my bachelor's degree in information science and technology and my first job out of college was actually in a cybersecurity rotation program which I think was a great experience for me to be able to kind of learn the different areas in cybersecurity that I could potentially go into since prior to that I didn't have any cybersecurity work experience and I really only had cybersecurity courses that I took in college around digital forensics and network security and nowadays there definitely isn't kind of like a set path that you have to go on to start your cybersecurity career. You could be someone who is self-taught and have really cool projects and be able to get into cybersecurity based on that hands-on experience. Of course, some companies may require you to have a bachelor's or an associate's or some kind of hard requirement, but there are now many companies who kind of have those set as preferred requirements. So as I do feel like a lot of the job market in general is kind of moving away from standard traditional education, there's definitely a long way to go. But I do think that that has definitely improved since maybe 10 or 20 years ago, where you really did need a college degree to get into a fancy high paying job in tech out of college. But nowadays there's so many learning resources online for getting into cybersecurity, how to get started as a beginner. My channel is primarily focused on getting into cybersecurity as well as sharing my experience with you all in my early career. And I do have a video on the top free courses for cybersecurity and I can link that down in my description, as well as just various courses, certification programs, um, boot camps. There's just so many ways to get into cybersecurity now that, that no matter where you're starting from, if you're able to put in the effort to learn the skills that employers are looking for, then I do think that you'll 100% be able to find a job in cybersecurity, even as a beginner. The next myth I want to discuss is the fact that you have to live and breathe cybersecurity to be able to work in cybersecurity. So I definitely have known people in my career to see the different types of people who work in cybersecurity, but I do think that going into it, you would think that a lot of people expect you to live and breathe cybersecurity. Like it's your hobby, you do CTFs on the weekend, you tinker with things in your home lab, keep up with cybersecurity news even on the weekends, you know, this is like all you do. But personally as someone who doesn't necessarily work on a lot of cybersecurity focused things outside of work, besides this YouTube channel of course, I have a lot more hobbies outside of my day job and that is definitely something I would like to keep that way. So one of the things holding you back from wanting to get into cybersecurity is the fact that you're afraid that you have to live and breathe every single waking moment spent on learning some kind of skill or keeping up with some kind of trend or doing xyz i definitely think that there's a good balance of it and it doesn't have to be your entire identity your entire life this is actually a conversation i had with my cousin recently and she mentioned that when she introduces herself the first thing people usually say is their name and then their job and she doesn't do that which is probably something that i aspire to because because while i do think that work and you know your job is a really really big part of your life it also isn't typically going to be the most important you still have family you still have your health and i think those two things are always going to be you know the most important things in life and of course they should always be above your work life so i do think that's something i aspire to personally i do think that a lot of my identity is wrapped around you know the title that i have at work especially because on my youtube channel this is what i talk about but i also think it's okay to have hobbies outside of work to not want to do a ctf once in a while to not feel like learning a new skill it's not the fact that you have to do it all the time because at some point you're going to get burned out if you know, you're just on this vicious cycle, always trying to catch and chase the newest trends or the newest skills in cybersecurity. So always try to keep a good work-life balance. I think that's really what I'm trying to say here. And that's not to say that you're not dedicated to your job or your work. I do think that's, of course, really important for the longevity of your career because if you don't like it then eventually you're going to get stressed get burned out and then and then want to go into a different sector and now i'd like to thank nordpass who is the sponsor of today's video nordpass makes it easy for businesses to manage your passwords and secrets all in one place keeping your passwords safe is one of the most important things nowadays with so many risks on data breaches or millions of credentials and passwords are leaked every single year as well as not to mention passwords that may still be stored in plain text on someone's desktop nordpass is a great solution to keep your passwords secure nordpass helps by generating strong unique passwords for all of your accounts in an encrypted password vault. Since we're always juggling multiple passwords for different applications, NordPass is a game changer and also makes the authentication process a lot faster with more convenience knowing that all your passwords and all your team's passwords are stored in one place. 
The best part is that NordPass works across different devices seamlessly. You can use it on your computer, smartphone, tablet. So no matter where you are or what device you are using, your passwords are always with you. NordPass takes security and privacy seriously and use a zero knowledge architecture, which means that your passwords are encrypted and decrypted locally on your device to ensure that only you and your team have access to the credentials. You can also detect data breaches early, give and revoke access effortlessly when onboarding or offboarding, store sensitive information, enhance security with company-wide settings, and get complete transparency over access and activity. By using the NordPass Business Password Manager, you can save time and energy, allowing your team to focus on what matters. See NordPass Business in action now with a three-month free trial at nordpass.com slash sandrabusiness with my code sandrabusiness linked in my description below. And thank you to NordPass for sponsoring today's video. Another very common myth that we probably see the most in, in media and pop culture is the fact that everything is hacking. I feel like when the typical person thinks of cybersecurity, they're probably thinking of hacking because of all the TV shows that we've seen of, you know, the hackers on their laptops and typing for a few minutes and then they're in, whatever in means. But honestly, hacking is just a silo of cybersecurity. There's so many other things, whether it's blue team, identity access management, um, cryptography, network security, digital forensics, malware analysis. There's a lot of different areas in cybersecurity. And I know that what the majority of the media covers is, you know, the red teaming side, the hacking side, which I agree is really cool. And it's definitely one of the most interesting areas in cybersecurity. But I also want you to keep in mind that if you want to go into cybersecurity, but maybe you're not as interested in red team, there's so many different roles in cybersecurity you wouldn't even think of because you may not even know they exist. And I have a few videos on the top roles in cybersecurity. I'll link that down in my description. But even things like security auditing, risk analysts, compliance managers, security sales engineers, security DevOps engineers, there's a lot of different roles in cybersecurity that aren't just dealing with pen testing or red teaming. And even if that's what the media mainly talks about, I do think it's important to share that there's a lot of other things that you can do. You could be a project manager for a cybersecurity team or a program manager for a cybersecurity team. And that is a job. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, hacker focused or like red team focused or offensive security focused. So definitely don't block yourself in, especially as a beginner, if you're just getting started, there's so many different areas you can go into. Personally, when I got started, I was in a rotation program. So I was on three different teams in two and a half years and now I'm currently working as a security analyst basically working in four different roles in the last almost four years and it's been really interesting I really like being able to kind of learn different things that different teams are doing and personally I've always wanted to have a career where I could dabble in a bunch of different areas and the next myth I think could definitely be a controversial one and it, and this is the fact that cybersecurity has long working hours slash crazy on-call hours and again this is from my personal experience and what I've seen from other teammates, other teams that I've been on. But from my experience, this hasn't been 100% true. I've definitely had the weeks where I've been working 60 hour weeks. Um, I work Friday nights, I work on weekends to catch up for the week before or the week after. And there are definitely going to be busy periods. But I will say that based on a lot of articles that I found, cybersecurity is typically listed as one of the most high stress, high work hours, high on call hours job in tech. And I haven't necessarily found that to be the case, but again, some background, my first job was in a financial services company. My second job, currently I'm working for a smaller tech company. And even though, again, I've had my busy weeks, I definitely don't think that I have the worst work-life balance. In fact, I'm someone who really values my work-life balance and I probably wouldn't stay at a job if I were continuously working 50, 60, 70 hours a week on a regular basis. But personally, my experience with on-call, I've actually never worked on-call, but I will be starting soon. But as of the time filming this video, I have not, so I can't say that I have that much experience with it. But the fact that I worked on four different cybersecurity teams and none of them had on-call so far, I do think that's something to call out because cybersecurity definitely does get a rep for, you know, having really tough on-call hours. Unless you're on a SOC team or an OC team, you probably do have really crazy hours. But it also, again, goes back to what role you're working in cybersecurity. As a security analyst, it's very different from someone who, who is working in a 24 seven security operations center. So definitely something to keep in mind. And of course, it's something to also bring up during your interviews when you're applying to jobs. You definitely want to make sure it aligns long-term. Otherwise, eventually you're gonna hate it, especially if the job itself doesn't align with your work-life balance, if you're going to be expected to work long hours or on weekends or on evenings. But I definitely don't think that this is 100% true for every single job in the cybersecurity sector. Of course, there's a lot of stats out there for cybersecurity burnout, cybersecurity stress, and I don't want to disregard those things because I know that cybersecurity as a field can definitely do better, you know, in terms of 
de-stressing their employees, um, de-stressing their cybersecurity teams because because at the end of the day, alert fatigue, stress, burnout are kind of like the big three downsides of being a cybersecurity employee. So I would say this myth can be true depending on the role that you go into. But if you're someone who is actively looking for the roles that fit what you're looking for, then I do think it's possible to find a good cybersecurity job with good salaries, good benefits, good job security that also has good work-life balance where you're not working crazy hours and not working crazy on call. The next myth is the fact that you need a cybersecurity degree to get into cybersecurity. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I don't believe that you really need any degree to work in any job um, unless you know, you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer or something that really does require an advanced degree. Personally, I do think that a lot of the things that you learn in college, you can also learn online via the internet. There are also a lot of boot camps and a free courses and certification programs that you can find online to to add to your learning so i definitely don't think that you need a degree to get into a cybersecurity role in fact that's also why cybersecurity boot camps are becoming so popular because they are typically going to be three to six months maybe a year compared to a four-year bachelor's degree which is probably going to cost four times as much probably even more than that to be honest in total my degree was about eighty thousand dollars but i did have federal aid and scholarships as well as money that i paid myself out of pocket but i went to a very normal very typical state school so i can't imagine what that cost would be like if you went to a private university if you went out of state so basically college is very expensive and i definitely wouldn't just go to college just because you don't know what your next steps are after high school and if you're in that boat i'll definitely give it some thought on what you want to do and again i think that's why cybersecurity boot camp programs and bootcamp programs in general for a lot of different jobs in tech are getting so much more popular nowadays. They're typically at a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the time commitment. And if you join a good program, you'll still be able to find a well-paying job in tech. So yeah, that's what I think about our security degrees. They're kind of like a nice to have if you want to get them, although there's definitely other sides to this discussion, but I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. And the last thing I wanted to discuss is an interesting one that I actually read online recently, and that is the myth that you need to know coding or math to get to cybersecurity. I will say that if you were a CS major, you probably did take a decent amount of math classes. I would probably think that 90% of CS majors would agree with me that they probably don't use math in their day-to-day -day job, at least not advanced calculus or DVQ or whatever other advanced math classes there were, unless you're in data science or a PhD program that's completely different. But for a typical cybersecurity role, you won't need any coding unless you're a security engineer or you're building apps or you're scripting, but you most likely won't be doing any full stack development. But I do think that coding is a very helpful skill to have, whether you're in cybersecurity or not because just in general, I think coding is a helpful skill to have if you work in tech, and it could also potentially make your life a lot easier if you're able to automate something for your team or just make a process easier. But for the most part, you most likely will not be needing math or coding skills on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these myths in cybersecurity, if there's any that you agree or disagree with, or any that you've heard of yourself and kind of want to debunk in the comments below with the community. We also have a Discord channel where you guys can share all things cybersecurity careers, conversations, uh, certifications. So feel free to join that. It is completely free, linked in my description below. I also have a course on how to get started in cybersecurity. If you guys want to learn more about the exact steps that I took to get my first job in cybersecurity without any experience, hopefully it can help you as well. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.